Three weeks ago, a 52-year-old patient sat across from me, staring at his lab results in disbelief. But Dr. Hashmi, I feel completely fine. How can my kidneys be 40% function? I pulled up his lab results from five years ago, and they were completely normal. Three years ago, there was a little bit of protein in the urine that his doctor called nothing to worry about. Today, he already has stage four kidney disease with marked protein in the urine heading towards dialysis. This is the silent catastrophe that's affecting 38 million Americans with diabetes right now. By the time you feel symptoms, you might have already lost a significant amount of kidney function. Often, symptoms will appear all the way down when EGFR or kidney function is down to 30 or even below 20%. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. I've watched way too many patients discover kidney damage too late. Today, I'm going to show you exactly what diabetes does to your kidneys at the cellular level and the simple tests that can catch damage five to 10 years before symptoms ever appear. One in three adults with diabetes has chronic kidney disease, but over 90% don't know it because there are no symptoms, there's no pain, silent destruction happening filter by filter. Let me show you what's happening inside your body right now. Your kidneys contain two million tiny filters called nephrons. Imagine two million coffee filters working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Each nephron has a glomerulus, the actual filter surrounded by blood vessels. Now, these filters are engineering perfection. They keep your blood's precious proteins and red blood cells inside the body while removing exactly the right amount of waste and water. And in one day, your kidneys can filter approximately 180 liters of plasma ultrafiltrate. That's about 50 gallons. And they produce one to two liters of urine containing exactly the right amount of toxins, excess fluid, and metabolic waste. But they do so much more than fluid and waste products. They produce erythropoietin, which is used to stimulate red blood cell production. They activate vitamin D for bone health. They release renin to regulate blood pressure. They balance pH to keep your blood from becoming too acidic. And they control fluid and electrolyte balance with remarkable precision. If you have ever had protein in the urine and the doctor said, listen, it's nothing to worry about, let me know in the comments below. And be sure to start taking active measures to control any protein in the urine you see. Let's go into phase one, which is the sugar assault. And that's around years zero when you get the diabetes up to year five. So high blood glucose or high blood sugar is pouring syrup through coffee filters. It's literally caramelizing your kidney tissues. The sugar molecules, they attach to proteins in your kidney filters through a plot process called glycation. I've seen kidney biopsies that look brown and stiff instead of the pink and supple that you expect. And here's a plot twist. Your kidneys initially try to compensate for this change by hyperfiltering, or in other words, working overtimes. Your EGFR might actually look super normal. In other words, it might be high, 120 or 130, because your kidneys are working overtime. And your doctor might even say, your kidneys are working great when they're not. They're screaming for help and they're burning out. Let's get to phase two, the pressure explosion. This phase, roughly years three to eight or sometimes five and beyond. But what happens here is as glucose damages your blood vessels, your kidneys internal pressure regulation, it fails. Efren arterial, think of it as the pipe going in, it starts to get larger or dilates too much. And the efren arterial, think of it as the pipe going out, it starts to narrow or constrict. So what is the end point? This process of opening the in, closing the out, it increases the pressure in your filters as much as double. And that causes damage or tearing of those filters. And this is when albumin, a protein that should be minuscule in your urine, it starts leaking through. So first, 
you'll notice that it's just 30 to about 300 milligrams per day. We call that microalbuminuria. And your doctor might say it's mild, but remember, once again, your kidneys are screaming for help. Then comes phase three, which I consider the cellular massacre. And that starts around five years and continues. And that's where the real destruction starts. High blood glucose, it will trigger five deadly pathways that cause cells to swell, create irreversible protein damage, trigger inflammation, promote scarring, and destroy cellular DNA through oxidative stress. The podocytes, which are specialized octopus-like cells, they wrap around your filters and they start to die off. Now, it's important to understand these cells, these podocytes, don't regenerate. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. And so in kidney biopsies, you can see bare spots where podocytes have disappeared like trees missing from a forest. Then comes phase four, which is the scarring phase. And typically you're looking at years eight and beyond where you start to see this. Your kidneys, they launch a desperate repair attempt, but instead of healing, they end up creating scar tissue. Things like TGF beta and other fibrosis signals, they cause 50% of your glomerulite to become scar tissue or what we call glomerulosclerosis. And the percentage can be more or less. The tubules, which are the processing centers downstream from the glomerulus also start to scar. So the end product is healthy pink tissue is replaced by white rope-like collagen. Your kidneys shrink and harden. On ultrasound, instead of plump 10 to 11 centimeter kidneys, you'll see shrunken 8 to 9 centimeter kidneys with irregular borders. And by now, typically, patients are spilling over 300 milligrams of albumin daily. We call that macroalbuminuria. And the EGFR is falling as much as 5 to 10 points per year. If the patient doesn't get any intervention, they'll end up needing dialysis in about five to seven years. And phase five is what I call the uremic catastrophe. When EGFR or kidney function, it drops below 15, toxins that should be filtered, they accumulate to poisonous levels. Urea, for example, causes nausea, confusion, seizures. High potassium can trigger fatal heart arrhythmias. Phosphorus calcifies your blood vessels. And metabolic acidosis, or acid building up in the blood, it destroys your bones and muscles. And finally, fluid starts to build up in the body and it can end up in your lungs. This is uremia. And a terrible way to think of it is urine being trapped in the body, in the blood. In other words, all this excess waste products and excess fluid is trapped in the blood. And if you don't get dialysis or you get a transplant, it could be fatal in as early as days or weeks. Here's what I think 90% of doctors and patients miss, which is we can detect kidney damage as much as a decade before this endpoint. Two simple widely available tests have changed everything for my patients, including my patient Marcus that I mentioned earlier. Test number one is urine albumin to creatinine ratio, also called UACR. And what it does is it detects albumin in the urine before any symptoms. Remember, normal albumin in the urine is less than 30 milligrams per gram. Microalbuminuria is 30 to 300 milligrams per gram. And this is reversible with treatments. Macroalbuminuria is greater than 300 milligrams per gram. And it is harder to reverse, but we can certainly stabilize it. And with all the medications we have, and the lifestyle, I've seen several patients bring it all the way down to normal. And remember, for urine albumin creatinine ratio, there is no fasting required. All you're going to do is just pee in a cup. Test number two is EGFR, stands for Estimated Glomerular Filtration Rate. And it's calculated from a simple blood test, creatinine. So normal is greater than 90 mils per minute. Mildly reduced is 60 to 89. Moderate reduction is 30 to 59. Severe, of course, is 15 to 29. And kidney failure is less than 15. 
And this is included in a basic metabolic panel. Now I've made the stages very simple, but remember in the moderate reduction, which is stage three, there's a 3A, which is 45 to 59, and a stage 3B, which is 35 to essentially 44. Keep that in mind that I've simplified the stages just so it's easier for you to understand. Now, in terms of going back to our patient Marcus, Marcus, we noticed that he had all this protein in the urine, but when we looked at his numbers years before, they were so minimal that if we had acted then, we could have done a tremendous amount of help as far as that goes. But we were able to stabilize things and make sure that he's still okay. But remember, you want to understand that you will not have symptoms until it's almost too late. What symptoms are those? Well, there's no pain. There's no change in urine appearance. There's no fatigue. Usually fatigue starts when the kidney function is less than 30. There's no swelling until kidney function is low and there's a lot of protein in the urine and there's no appetite loss. But what you can look for is subtle signs. And what are those subtle signs? Foamy urine, like a bubble bath or beer foam, getting up multiple times at night. Now that can be enlarged prostate or it could be other things. If you're waking up in the morning, you have eye puffiness. If your blood pressure is hard to control. If you got unexplained fatigue. But other things are things like metallic taste in the mouth or itching that's happening without any rash. Or you're having leg cramps at night. All of these are warning signs. If you're having any symptoms, always check with your doctor and a simple blood test and urine test can help. What are the acceleration factors that will make the damage occur faster? Number one is blood pressure. If your blood pressure is over 130 over 80, this doubles the speed of decline. And if you have an A1C, hemoglobin A1C, which measures your blood sugar, if that's greater than eight, that will actually add a whole other layer. You can think of it as almost tripling the risk of protein in the urine. And if you're smoking, the greatest thing you can do today is stop because smoking accelerates kidney decline by as much as 50%. Painkillers like Motrin, Ibuprofen, Aleve, Excedrin can all damage the kidneys and they can cause even acute kidney injury. High protein diet, especially animal proteins, they can increase hyperfiltration. In other words, put a lot more pressure onto the kidneys. And then if you're chronically dehydrated and on medications, that can also create issues. The hardest part about this in my job is when I see patients that I have to start on dialysis. And as an adult doctor, I've seen as young as 18-year-old patients that I've had to start on dialysis for a variety of reasons. But here's what you want to know. I've had many patients that have been able to avoid patients despite having diabetes simply because they started to make lifestyle choices and we used medications on them. What's the secret to this? Making sure that your urine albumin creatinine ratio and a blood test so we can measure your GFR is checked, especially if you have diabetes. Let me give you some exact things to watch out for. If you are a diabetic, Make sure that you're getting your urine, albumin, creatinine ratio, remember that's peeing in a cup, and a blood test to measure your eGFR. And make sure that if you've been a diabetic for five years, especially if you've been a diabetic for five years, that these tests are part of your routine visit. And you want to at least, at a minimum, get this stuff screened annually. And also, it's important that we have so many medications that I'm going to be discussing in the next upcoming video on how they can have such a powerful impact. On the flip side though, there are certain medications to avoid. Proton pump inhibitors, names like omeprazole, etc. There are so many of them. Always review with your doctor if you're going to stop any medication or start any medication. Painkillers called NSAIDs. Antibiotics, for example, gentamicin. Contrast dye. If you're going to do it, we need to make sure that we hydrate you before and after. And also be careful about herbal supplements, especially those that have aristolochic acid that we've talked about in previous videos. Now, the thing you want to take away from this video that's really important is your kidneys are regeneration proof 
organs. What does that mean? Unlike your liver, your kidneys cannot grow back. So every nephron that you lose is gone forever. But the good news is you're born with this huge reserve capacity and you can lose 50% of function and just be fine. Remember when we donate a kidney, we've lost half of our kidney function and yet the surviving kidney takes over the role and people do just fine. In terms of what medications and doses are going to help to stop this kidney destruction, that's going to be coming up in one of the next videos I'm doing where I'll show you the drug combinations that are now able to stabilize kidney function. And these are things that even some doctors may not know or may not be doing. And if you're wondering what the heck should you be eating to protect your kidneys, go back to video one of this series, which goes through all the meal plans that have helped so many of my patients reverse their protein in the urine in a matter of weeks to months. The difference, remember, between dialysis and healthy kidneys, it isn't luck. It's early detection, it's aggressive protection, and you, as the patient, committing to lifestyle changes. Your action step is very simple. Talk to your doctor. Make sure that you're checking your protein in the urine, urine albumin creatinine ratio, and you're checking your metabolic panel to see what your creatinine is. We can use that to calculate your eGFR. And finally, remember, don't wait for symptoms. By then, it's too late. I want to thank you guys for joining me on this video. As always, don't express, don't forget to express kindness to others. And more importantly, kindness to yourself, gratitude to yourself by taking care of your body. Thank you so much for joining me. If this was helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, the share and subscribe button so I can continue this work. And I'll see everyone next time.